I'm counting down the top 10 illegal jobs that make the most money from drug lord to the mob's favorite moneymaker. From interviews with the culprits to revealing which Hollywood star has a hitman in the family, we're talking getting rich the hard way today on Let's Talk Money. Beat that. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click on that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. One of the most popular vids here on the channel has been that 10 high paying jobs you can get without a degree. And researching for the video, I came across something I just had to follow up on. Now I know I can't be the only one that thinks about this. Some of the most popular movies and shows have been about it. From Tony Montana to Walter White of Breaking Bad, we're fascinated by the get rich ease of underground jobs. So I couldn't resist researching the top 10 illegal jobs to get rich how much they make, and the truth when you get behind that Hollywood hype. What I found blew my mind and is going to take some of the glamour off of these jobs. Understand that this is purely for entertainment purposes only. In fact, after this list, I'm going to reveal one reason not to go over to the dark side that nobody ever thinks about until it's too late. Our first illegal high paying job here is a big one, the drug lord. Now the United Nations estimates the global illicit drug market at over 360 billion a year. So we're talking a whole industry of workers from growers to dealers all the way up to the kingpin. I actually live right now in Medellin, Colombia, yes, home of Pablo Escobar and the Narcos, and I've seen my share of dumb gringos coming down thinking they're going to be the next Frank Lucas, immortalized by Denzel Washington in the movie American Gangster. A gram of cocaine is going to cost you about $10 here on the streets of Medellin and sells for as much as $80 a gram in the United States. Understand though that you've got an entire industry of jobs at every step. For example, when someone buys drugs on the street, they typically pay a dealer and then have to go to another guy that actually hands over the drugs. This is an attempt not to get prosecuted as a dealer because the first guy is just collecting money from a friend. The second guy is just sharing his own stash, not necessarily selling anything. Depending on what these guys are selling, they might make a few hundred a day up to a few thousand. But these guys are the chumps, right? They're taking all the risk while the city supplier or the drug lord sits back and collects millions. It's estimated that Bolivian drug lord Roberto Suarez Gomez was making over 400 million a year during the 80s. Our next illegal job is fencing and it's probably the most common way the mob makes money. There's two strategies to fencing here, either reselling stolen goods or using a patsy company to buy goods not paying for them and then sell them at a discount. The mob knows it can move these sales fast because they're selling at a huge discount, like 40 cents on the dollar. What does it care? It's all profit because it didn't pay anything in the first place. Now the mob might hijack a truck or one of the best examples is in the movie Goodfellas where the mob boss Polly gets involved to protect a restaurant owner. For payback, the mob starts charging all kinds of liquor, meats, whatever on the restaurant's credit accounts, then turns around and sells the stuff out the back door. It's a short term scam because the restaurant is never going to be able to pay off those charges, but the mob knows it can always move on and squeeze someone else. According to a paper published by Notre Dame Law School, property theft and fencing costs upwards of $144 billion a year. Consider a huge discount on the resale and that's still worth $30 billion a year in the United States alone. Now for fencing, it helps to have that organized network to muscle a shop owner. Otherwise, you're playing the stick up man at night while trying to sell stuff all day. I don't know, but that sounds like a lot of work to me. Our third illegal job for big bucks, bank robber. And this is one you don't hear about much because banks have a policy of not disclosing how much is stolen in a robbery. Why? Because if people knew just how much bank robbers were making, oh boy. Bank heists are down 60% in the past 25 years according to FBI stats while cyber crimes have exploded. The Bureau reports just over 4,000 robberies were pulled in 2015, but that still amounted to over 28 million or about $7,000 each robbery. Now that's not a lot of money, but considering a 2017 study found the average bank robbery lasts just three minutes, it comes out to making about $140,000 an hour. In 2015, heistman Clay Toomey did a question and answer on Reddit about his experience robbing three banks in 2006. Toomey was never caught, but turned himself in to serve three years in 2007. Toomey says he learned everything from the internet and never told anyone what he was doing. He would simply walk into a bank, hand the first available teller a note demanding all 50s and $100 bills, and then walk right out. No threats and no gun, he was in and out within a minute and considering the average police response time into a robbery is over 5 minutes, he never saw a cop car. Fourth on our list of high paying illegal jobs, and this has always been a really interesting one to me, is illegal casino. Is it hypocrisy or just state sanctioned organized crime that only casinos can set up their own gambling? I mean, here you have a company that is allowed to create games designed to take your money. 
Worse still is they can kick you out if you're caught doing anything like counting cards, which is totally legal, but gives you the advantage. The casino industry pulls in over $77 billion a year in the United States alone and pays its employees an average of just $47,000 a year. There are more than 500 casinos in the US in every state except Hawaii and Utah. Now my mom spent a lot of time in the casinos when I was growing up and I've spent my fair share. So I watch movies like The House, Rounders and Boiler Room and I think, wouldn't it be nice to be on the winning side of that for once? Now most illegal casinos are actually set up as infrequent tournaments rather than a round the clock casino. The host charges a buy-in fee and then pays out most of the money to the tournament winners but keeps some for profit. On traditional casino games, understand that your profit is extremely thin. The average profit on a casino game is well under 5% which means you'll get about $5 for every $100 gambled each hour. Compare that to the 45% made by state lotteries and the biggest winner to legalize gambling becomes immediately clear. So casinos, illegal or otherwise, make their money up in quantity. If you're only making a 3% profit on gamblers, you need 100 people making $100 bets for an hour to make a $300 profit. Out of this, you have to pay dealers, wait staff, security, everybody else. You can see why casinos need 24-7 operations and tens of thousands of people to make up those billions of dollars. Our fifth illegal job, con artist, and whether it be from those shady investment schemes like the 65 billion stolen by Bernie Madoff or the nearly 3 million in bad checks written by Frank Abagnale. Now con artist is a tricky one to explain because it's not one specific illegal job, but a way of pulling off a range of heists from that multi-level Ponzi scheme to just selling phony products. You know the saying, if you believe that, I've got a bridge to sell you. It became popular because there was actually a con, possibly the greatest con artist in American history that made millions selling the Brooklyn Bridge after it had been built in 1883. For 30 years, George Parker convinced recent immigrant arrivals and others that he was more interested in bridge building than ownership. He would sell them the rights to put tolls on the Brooklyn Bridge for just $75 or about $1,700 in today's prices. It's said that George sold the bridge out of his real estate offices about twice a week for three decades, a scam that would have made him over $5.4 million. Being a con artist is just as much about personality and salesmanship as about anything else. From the longer title, Confidence Man, these people find those worst traits in others and exploit them for a profit. One of the most famous con artists, Joseph Yellow Kid Wheel, writes in his autobiography, the desire to get something for nothing has been very costly to many people who have dealt with me and other con men. When people learn, as I doubt they will, that they can't get something for nothing, crime will diminish and we shall live in greater harmony. Over halfway through our list of high paying illegal jobs and the next on the list is hacker. Hacking has come a long way since Matthew Broderick played tic-tac-toe to avert nuclear war in 1983. IBM security estimates that 80% of cybercrime is now perpetrated by organized crimes operated in cubicle farms just like regular business. It's estimated that hackers will steal data or breach the networks of over 60% of the businesses in the United States each year and generate at least $1.5 trillion globally. That includes over $160 billion in trading personal information and a billion in ransomware. One of the newest forms of hacking is breaking into someone's computer, locking it up, and then demanding a ransom to unlock it. A 2013 launch of the ransomware CryptoLocker reportedly made over $3 million doing just that. Another hilarious new scam going around is what's called porn pirates, where emails are sent out claiming to have hacked your webcam and recorded your free time spent in front of the computer. The hackers then demand up to $800 in a Bitcoin transfer or they'll release the video to everyone you know. Now this one isn't even a hack really. The scammers haven't hacked your computer but are simply playing on people's fears of being hacked and humiliated. Our seventh illegal job, arms dealer, actually isn't illegal at all. There's a legitimate business of buying and selling weapons but you have to do it through government procurement contracts. The 2016 movie War Dogs with Jonah Hill is a surprisingly true to life recount of three friends making millions from Pentagon weapons procurement bidding process. The Miami natives bought and sold guns and ammunitions for years, buying from brokers in Eastern Europe and then selling to the US military. It was only when they landed a $300 million contract to supply the Afghan army with ammunition that it became an illegal job that would eventually bring them down. They had to deliver on millions of rounds for the contract and turned to repackaging illegal Chinese ammunition in Albania. Outside the legitimate arms trade, that's how the illegal gun runner works buying weapons in mass markets with few restrictions and then selling in places like West Africa that have import restrictions on those weapons. This was the model used in the 2005 Nicolas Cage movie Lord of War based on a collection of gun runners including Victor Boot and Sarkis Saganelian. How much do illegal arms dealers make? John Bernard Lasson, a French born arms dealer in Florida claims to make about two and a half million dollars a year. Victor Boot is estimated to have made over 50 million selling arms to the Taliban in the late 90s. As for getting started, American citizens must first get a federal firearms license and then an export license, but that's about it. 
You have to learn the import export rules around the business, but even someone on the legal side of this can make a lot of money. Eighth on our list of illegal jobs is the world's second oldest profession, pimp, and a report by the Urban Institute in 2014 shows just how much pimping pays. The report revealed the underground sex economy to be as high as 290 million a year just in eight major US cities. In this study of markets in Atlanta, Dallas, Denver, Kansas City, Miami, Seattle, San Diego, and DC, pimps made between 5,000 to almost 33,000 a week. More than a third of the pimps interviewed worked through what they called a bottom girl, a trusted prostitute that helped manage the others and often took the blame with law enforcement. Pimps and their network advertise, provide security, and pay some of the expenses. Lest you think it's all big dollar signs though, pimps reported spending upwards of 500 a week just on transportation and rental cars. From 300 to 500 a week went to beauty salons, tanning and clothes, and hotel costs could easily reach up to a grand a week. All going to show that Big Daddy Kane was right when he said pimping ain't easy. Second to last on our list is the ticket broker or scalper as most people know it. Secondary market sites like StubHub and SeatGeek have changed the game for these money makers. The ticket scalper's biggest problem today isn't the cops but the bots used by these large scale brokers. A big time ticket scalper can have rows of computers and software that hits the online ticketing sites with thousands of ticket requests. They can corner the market for a concert in a matter of minutes and then make thousands selling when the price is right. There's still some room for the little guy though with a team of people sitting around their computers. You'll spend most of your time researching what concerts you think could be popular and then being ready when tickets go on sale. You then watch the price on secondary sites and wait to sell your tickets. There is some risk here though because basically ticket scalpers are betting on what concerts are going to be in demand when tickets are sold out. One scalper told Billboard.com that he might lose $100,000 on a lousy concert. The higher price of tickets has also cut into those profits. The same broker said he used to make $60 to $70 on a ticket but now might only clear $30 because of the original price of the tickets was so high. There really isn't even much legal action against scalpers these days besides being difficult to catch and prosecute, who's going to go after the guy making 30 bucks on a ticket when the venue is charging 15 bucks for a beer? Our last illegal job here is the hitman or professional assassin. Now hundreds of movies have been made about hired killers and after researching the job, this one is definitely the most glamorized and reimagined by Hollywood. Research in 2003 by the Australian Institute of Criminology found the average payment for a hitman around $15,000, but more than half of those contracts paid less than $9,000. Not what you'd expect from movie lore where the hitman wins six figure contracts. Also contrary to what you see in the movies, the Australian and other studies have found that personal relationships are the most common reason for a hit. One in five hits are contracted ahead of a coming divorce, breakup, or a cheating spouse. So if you're thinking you're only going to be killing bad guys, think again. Only 10% of the hits are tied to organized crime or drug related. Contract killings aren't the sophisticated and elaborate plans you see on the big screen either. Most involve simply walking up to the person with a gun, sometimes making it look like a failed robbery. In fact, the only Hollywood connection I could find is the fact that one Hollywood star, Woody Harrelson's dad, Charles Harrelson, was convicted of killing two people and accused of several other murders. The elder was reportedly paid $14,000 in today's dollars for the 68 killing of Sam DeGalia and later accused of killing Judge John Wood Jr. in 1979. That's 10 illegal jobs that can make a lot of money, but there's one flaw that nobody ever thinks about. Even if you can make those six figures in some of these jobs, and it seems that most of them don't, what happens when you get caught? Factor in the lost wages while in prison and the shitty jobs for the rest of your life, plus the value of the lost time with your family, I don't think it'd be worth it for a million dollars. We're here Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with the best videos on beating debt, making more money, and making your money work for you. If you've got a question about money, just subscribe to the channel and ask it in the comments. We'll make sure you get an answer in a future video.